Well, good morning and welcome to our morning service of worship. You're most welcome wherever you are joining us from. For those who don't know me, my name is Reverend Simon Scullin, the minister in charge of the Longford Group of Parishes. And I welcome you here to our online service this morning, led by the Mother's Union. It's a special time of fellowship where we come together. And although our church buildings are open this morning, the ladies have come together virtually to share with you and with me and with others, the witnesses of God, the joy of fellowship. To take part, sing the hymns, join in the liturgy and worship together. I would like to welcome you all to our Mother's Union service online. I am Diane and I am the branch leader here in Longford. The Mother's Union are a worldwide organisation with members in 84 countries. Our theme for 2021 is Rebuilding Hope and Confidence, which works well with our vision that everyone prospers and that we help build confident people and resilient communities. Advent prayer, preparing for glory. God of light and wonder, prepare our soul for the glory of Advent. Illumine our way as we journey anew to meet the newborn Christ. Isaiah 40 verses 3 and 5. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Prepare the way of the Lord. He is the light that comes to darkness. He is the strength that comes to weakness. He is the wind we hear approaching, like a mighty roar of thunder. The Lord is near. Prepare the way and sing of his glory, all his people. Amen. Our members are lighting these candles for everyone who has had a bereavement during the year. They also are being lit to show hope for the year ahead after a very difficult 2020. God our Father, you gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord and baptised them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us who have been baptised into Christ to grow strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare, for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you now.
Let us pray. Advent God, we journey with you to Bethlehem stable and a newborn king. Ears attuned to the song of angels, eyes alert for Bethlehem star. Forgive us if on our journey we are distracted by the tempting offers of this world. Keep our hearts aflame with the hope of Christmas and the promise of a saviour. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading is from John, chapter 1, verses 14 to 30. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees, who had been sent, questioned him, Why then do you baptise if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptise with water, John replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptising. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Well, as we come to God's word, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the abundance of your love. Thank you for your presence with us. And as we open and reflect on your word, we pray, Lord, that you would steer and guide us this day. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. This is the most amazing thing you will ever see. Not this video clip, but on a children's camp many years ago, the weather cancelled an outdoor event. In the winter time, weather stopped play and 80 10 year olds were downcast. The leaders scrambled for ideas. What could we do to entertain them? And then the main leader stepped to the front and announced with excitement, this is the most amazing thing you will ever see. The crowd of kids were captivated. What could it be? They leant forward, trying to see. The excitement grew like a rush of wind, and the leader produced the most exciting thing ever seen. It was a pen. 
The activity that followed was the most enthusiastic games of Pictionary I have ever seen. The warm-up act had been successful. The crowd were warmed. The kids were excited. The kids were interested. And the rest was history. Well, in today's Gospel reading, the crowd were witnessing the most amazing warm-up act to the most amazing thing that ever happened. The ministry of the incarnate God, Jesus, in their midst. The message was clear and exciting. John the Baptist was signposting the truth. He illuminated the way. He indicated salvation. The message of the Baptist was clear and excited. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The one who would transform the world. And John the Baptist introduces us to this reality. Well, have you ever questioned who Jesus actually is? Have you ever stopped and thought about Jesus, the sacrificial lamb who takes away the sin of the world? For those in Israel, in John chapter 1, they were wondering who the Messiah was. They were pondering, they were wondering, when would the Messiah come? And how he would change the world. They wondered, they waited. And the arrival of John the Baptist created a stir. And in response, the Jewish leaders inquired, Who are you? Well, when asked this morning, or indeed any time, about you, what is the first thing you say? When someone says, tell me a little bit about yourself, what is the first thing that you say? How do you describe yourself? In those conversations, do you mention Jesus? John the Baptist, he pointed away from himself. He simply declared, I am nothing special, but there is one who is coming, the Lamb of God. The crowd were puzzled and asked him for more. They, they pondered, are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Who are you? Why ask such questions and why would the gospel writer Remind us of these things. Well, the answer is here in the expectancy of these people. The Old Testament scriptures foretold it. Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. Hear these words. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the people. John wasn't the Messiah. Was he Elijah? Or was he the prophet? This is the one greater than Moses foretold in Deuteronomy 18 verse 15. That would bring spiritual and political freedom for the Israelites. The excitement was huge. The sense of anticipation, expectation, great. The people needed to know the answer. Was this really happening? And the proof the gospel is telling us is yes. Yes, this is happening. John the Baptist, the warm-up act for Jesus, was testifying the truth about the one who would come. Jesus is here. But John keeps his cards close to his chest. He was neither going to reveal the answer or attempt to to fulfill glory for himself. And instead he uses the words of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 40 verse 3. We looked at them in last week's service. I am a voice in the wilderness. Crying prepare the way of the Lord. John. Was the preparer of hearts. The challenger of lives to welcome the true one, the true Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. John was clear. He was not the one who would change the world by divine power. But the divine one is here and he can and does change the world. By his love. 
John simply says, Not me, but behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He's Jesus. Don't look at me. Look at him. The one who will change lives. So how do we respond to this scripture this morning? Do we join in the excitement that we see here in the page as people ponder and wonder the Messiah and all that he would do? Well, reflect for a moment. How does our lives testify about Jesus? How do our lives testify about Jesus? When asked to describe ourselves, what do we say? Do we talk of Jesus? When we go to the shops, do our lives testify to Jesus? What about driving cars? Our driving habit, does that testify to Jesus? How do our lives testify to Jesus? I think here in this passage, there is both encouragement and challenge for us as God's people. The challenge? We have a responsibility to testify to Jesus. It's a biblical command of Jesus to go and tell people physically. It's a responsibility of grace. As we receive grace, we pass grace on. We have a responsibility to tell others about Jesus. But how? How do we do that? Well, we do this through all our opportunities that we each possess. You have opportunities I do not have. I have opportunities that you don't have. Together we testify to Jesus. We use our opportunities. We use where we are. We use our places of work. We use our family lives. We use the, use the shops we live and work through. We use our opportunities. When asked, John the Baptist uses his opportunity. He quotes Isaiah 40, which refers to the clearing of obstacles from a people returning from exile. John the Baptist prepared the way for people. He cleared the obstacles from them, particularly sin and the need for repentance in preparation for Jesus. And in many ways, our task in love is also the same, is to help people, help others know Jesus. The task of witnessing to Jesus today is similar to John. There is a task to help clear those obstacles away from people's lives for the coming of Jesus. And we do that by loving them and praying for them. That's our challenge, our responsibility. To share Jesus with people in the opportunities we have. Now, the encouragement. We do not do this alone. Jesus is with us and it is Jesus we work for, work by and work with. And like John in love, in relationship with others, we can walk up. Place our hand on other people's shoulders and say, In your life, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He loves you. He cares for you. Come, walk with him. The Divine One is here. And he changes the world. It is Jesus who does this work. We are merely his help. That's encouragement for us. The responsibility of people's lives doesn't rest on your shoulders or my shoulders. It rests on God's shoulders. But we join in that task with him. Our responsibility is to help others shoulder with them their lives. So that they can see the God of love operating. Encouragement? We don't do it. The responsibility? We must do something with God. To help others know the love of Jesus. Our task is to say, don't look at me alone, but look at him, the one worthy to be seen. The main camp leader stood up holding a pen 
and declared, this is the most exciting thing you will ever see. Well, what do we say? What do our lives say to others? Do our lives say, this is the most exciting thing to know Jesus, to love Jesus and walk by Jesus? Reflect for a moment. How do our lives testify Jesus? I believe in Jesus Christ and in the beauty of the gospel began in Bethlehem. I believe in the one whose spirit glorified a little town and whose spirit still brings music to persons all over the world in towns both large and small. I believe in the one for whom the crowded inn could find no room and I confess that my heart still sometimes wants to exclude Christ from life today. I believe in the one who the rulers of the earth ignored and the proud could never understand whose life was among common people, whose welcome came from persons of hungry hearts. I believe in the one who proclaimed the love of God to be invincible. I believe in the one who by love brought sinners back to purity and lifted human weaknesses up to meet the strength of God. I believe in God who gives us the best of himself. I believe in Jesus, the son of the living God, born in Bethlehem that night for me and the world. Advent 
intercessions. This Advent, as we wait for the hope of the world, we pray for God's hope to overcome the despair of loss and loneliness. Hear our prayer. This Advent, as we wait for the light of the world in the lives of our family and friends, God of light and hope, hear our prayers. This Advent, as we wait for the hope of the world, we pray that the love of God would fill us all with sure and certain hope. God of light and hope, hear our prayer. Amen. Now we pray using the word Advent. A. We pray for those who are angry and for those who are alone, for those who have been abused by others and those who ache to be accepted. May the coming of Jesus fill them with hope. God of light and hope, hear our prayer. D. We pray for those who feel defeated by all that they face each day, for those who are sick or dying, and for those who are filled with despair. May the coming of Jesus fill them with hope. God of light and hope, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are visit for peace, and for those who are the voice of the poor, for those who teach us to value each other, and for those who work with the vulnerable, the homeless and the lost. May the coming of Jesus fill them with hope. God of light and hope, hear our prayer. We pray for the planet Earth and for those who encourage us to care for it, for those seeking to escape the fighting in the world and for those working to provide essential food and clothing for the world's refugees. May the coming of Jesus fill them with hope. God of light and hope, hear our prayer. We we'll pray for our neighbours, those who live next door, across the road and around the world, for those who seek to follow the narrow way, and for those who name the name of Jesus and bring good news of him for others. May the coming of Jesus fill them with hope. God of light and hope, hear our prayer. We we'll pray for those whose lives have been changed by the work of terrorists, for those whose faith has been tested by the things they have that has happened to them, for those who teach us about Jesus and for those who should be the target of our love. May the coming of Jesus fill them with hope, God of light and hope. Hear our prayer.
On behalf of all our Mother's Union members, I would like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a peaceful and prosperous New Year. Well, as you step out into the world, we remember that God is alive and he is with us. We remember that we have a responsibility to, to testify the love of God. So wherever you go this week, whoever you speak to, whatever happens, remember that God is with you and loves you. So may the peace of God that passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. I'll go in peace of love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. God bless and farewell.